Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you for yes. just, just who you are by yourself. And I just thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Yes. Thank you for just the blessings you have blessed us all with, Lord. This is a breath of life and salvation. So I thank you for that, first of all. Yes. And I want to thank and praise you, Lord, for yes. the service today. And I pray that the praise will be pleasing in your ears. Yes, I pray that, Lord, that we will give you the true praise from our hearts, yes. Lord, because you truly deserve it. So I ask, Lord, that those that's giving it to the blessed, those that don't have to give, I pray you will bless their hearts, yes, Lord. Lord. Thank Jesus you, name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Victory is mine. Daily we 
with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on
thinking about my buddy, and I'm just, Thank it's, you, just it's just, it's just, I just can't. It's, it's been bothering me all weekend, you know. But, but I'm just so thankful for all my blessings. Amen. It's like you don't realize how good we got it when you see something that happens to yeah, somebody you're else. Right, brother. Like, you're it's right. Stopped. It's just, right. You know, it's bad. You know? You're right. But um. When I look around and see the good things he does for me, I know I'm unworthy of them all. Yeah, but his blessings he freely gives. I owe my life to him. I've got so much to thank him for, and I've got so much to thank him for, so much to praise him for, you see, he has been so good to me, and when I think of what he's done and where he has brought me from, I've got so much to thank him for, and sometimes, well, on this way I feel, I stop and say thank you for all you've done for me, but then one day I'll reach him and sure, oh, please. Let me kneel once more, I've got so much to thank him for. And I've got so much to thank him for, so much to praise him for, you see. He has been so good to me, and when I think of what he's done and where he's brought me from I've got so much to thank him for and I've got so much to thank him for so much to praise him for you see he's been so good to me and when I think of what he's done and where he has brought me from. I've got so much to thank him for. Thank you, Lord. I guess that's it. <laughs> thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, Brother Alex. We do have so much to thank him for. Yes, God. I know Sister Mary by her testimonies and Sister Laura and Carol and Tony and Sandra and Gina and Becca and Brother Al. Sister Anita, Brother Don. But I remember Sister Kim from many, many years ago. Didn't know her all that well. But there was a time that I was not serving God. There was a time that she wasn't serving God. And there was a time that you weren't serving God. I think some people think it's a decision we just make. We wake up one day and say, I'm going to become a Christian today. I'm going to serve God today. How many people know it's not like that? Amen. The Spirit draws you, and the Spirit gives you a choice. Do you accept Him, or do you not accept Him? I shall never forget the day that I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. I'll never forget the day. I don't even remember what was preached that day. I don't even remember what was saying that day. 
But I remember I gave my heart to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My message completely changed as we were here. I'm going to talk about what the Bible says and what we believe in the Word of God this morning. Sometimes when we get up, we talk about the promises of God, and the brother sang that today, standing on the promises. How many people know that those promises are for his children? Amen. His promises is for his children. And the fact that we come to church and the fact that we see it on internet somewhere or the fact that we see a preacher on TV does not save us. You've heard others and you've heard me say that many a time. It does not save us. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And I'm here to tell you that if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and this is to all the ones that are not believers, and you know what, Brother Al, there's many Jesuses out there. The Jehovah Witnesses have a different Jesus. The Muslims have a different Jesus. They believe in Jesus. The devils believe in Jesus. But it's not the Jesus that we believe in. The Jesus that we believe in is God Almighty. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, praise God. And all things were created by Him. And my prayer to everyone today that is watching on Facebook or even in our church, I'm glad people are coming in. We started out with two, then three, and now we got 14 in here today. Praise God. We beat the last week's record by two. And tonight, we'll see what happens tonight. We started out with three or four and ended up with 29. Praise God. But you know what? To become a child of God, you have to truly accept Jesus Christ. You have to surrender everything to Him. You have to open up and come naked as a newborn baby to Him, praise God. So I'll never forget the day. I'll never forget the day, praise God, that I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, praise God. And the promises, the promises are to His children. The problem that we have today is so much ignorance in the church and so much ignorance that we don't know what the promises are. Right. You know, we think everything is going to be hunky-dory. We think everything is going to be fine, praise God. You know what? Until I got into the Bible really about 11 or 12 years ago, and I was already saved for a number of years, I really didn't know all the promises of God and what God had for me. You hear a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. And sometimes, Sister Kim, you think, well, they're getting all the favors because they're, they're more dedicated or, or, they're, or they're getting more blessings because they're more dedicated. When you start to realize what God has already done for you, the blessings will start to flow. Amen. You realize that you're already favored by God, the favor will come. You can't receive something that you don't know that you already have. Somebody can give you a check for $1,000 or cash for $1,000 in an envelope. But if you have that envelope sitting on your table and you never open it up, you'll never know what you already have. And you can't use it at all, praise God. I remember a story about a, a, a mother and father, and this was based on a true story. Some of you can relate and laugh at this. There's different variations you might have had in your own life. Where, where the father gave him his debit card and said, whenever you need something, just go to the, the bank and get it out and, and, and you know punch in my password. So... About a month they come back from Florida and, and the kid's out of washing detergent. He's out of dish soap and he said, man, I almost ran out of toilet paper. I'm glad you came back, mom and dad. He goes, well, why didn't you go to the store and buy it? He goes, I didn't, you didn't leave me any money. He goes, I left you my debit card. All you had to do was stick it in and punch in the password. So the young boy, was it a 25 or a 30 year old boy? He was a 15 year old young man. He didn't know how to use a debit card back in that day. Now everybody, the kids five years old, knowing how to use a charge card and debit card, don't they? He didn't know that you could put it in there, going down to the corner one block up from his house, then going over to the uh, A&P at that time, the store was at the other corner, and buy whatever he wanted. You punch in the password, whatever it may be. Well, we have a debit card, and our password is J-E-S-U-S, -S, praise God. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's our debit card. So today, bear with me a little bit. I want to share a few things with you. Pick up your Bibles, if you will. Lift them up. Let God see them. Stand up. You'll be able to stand. Sandra is the first to stand, praise God. And shake them around a little bit. That's not just to get the dust off. That's to wake you up this morning, praise God. Okay. We all had a long weekend. 
Repeat after me with boldness and conviction in our spirit. This, this is, is my Bible. Bible. This is the truth, truth the whole truth, truth, and nothing but the truth. This is the infallible word of God. Jesus is the word. This is the good news, the good report, the sound doctrine. This is what believe in. Stand on, live by, and trust in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord we got to get the Bible, and I said this the last few weeks more into us. we got to understand what's in the Word of God. Praise God. Amen. You know, people talk about this. They talk about this. We had a, somebody talk a few weeks ago. I'm not going to get into it. They were talking about, they were talking about uh, a revelation that someone had heard, and you read all these people and see all these people on, on the videos and all that. They have all these revelations from God. And I'm going to tell you one thing right now. If the revelation from God does not line up with the Word of God, it is not from God. I don't care who you hear it from. I don't care how famous that preacher was or is today. It's got to line up with the Word of God. The Word of God is sufficient. The Word of God will never change. If we're gone 100 years from now, whoever opens up our Bibles with our names in it, they'll, they'll look and say, look at this old Bible from 100 years ago, from 2021. And you know what? It says the same thing that my Bible is saying today. It is not going to change. Amen. God's Word never changes itself. Thank God. You know what? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change, and He will not change. Praise God. And His promises are to His people. His promises are to His children. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I want to tell you what. You want those promises we sang about? You want those promises that we speak about? You want the healing? You want the deliverance? You have to go to Jesus first, praise God. you got to become a born-again Christian. Well, doesn't God love everybody? Yes, but not everybody is His child. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you've not accepted the Master, if you have not accepted our Lord, you are not saved. Black and white. That's number one today. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's not just mouthing it. It's having a willing action to say, I submit to you. I surrender everything to you. I come completely naked as a newborn child to you, Lord. Lord, cleanse me. Purge me. We pray for depression. We pray for the homeless. We pray for addiction. We need to pray for that more, praise God. People that are addicted, they have no idea. And the family I took, I, I preached on that yesterday, last night. You know, the family, I'm not we're going to get into that. But the family I dropped off in Elyria last night. 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. I'm saying, you need to get your act together. You need to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Well, we're working on it. Things are going to change. Things are going to get better. No, they're not. What do you mean they're not? I said, until you have a willingness to change, if you have a heart to say, I'm going to surrender to you. Amen. If you have a heart, I'm going to submit to you. Things will not change. These same people, I prayed with them years ago, and it's the exact same prayer I prayed two weeks ago, and, and I was praying yesterday to them. I said, there's going to be two or three or five years from now we're going to be praying the same thing if you're not dead in the grave. Don't call yourself a Christian if you're still getting high every day. Don't call yourself a Christian if you're still out slinging stuff in the streets. Don't call yourself a Christian if you're stealing from loved ones and everybody around you. Call yourself a Christian, even though you struggle, even though you fall. And again, it's not how many times you fall, it's how many times you can get back up. Keep going, keep trying to do the right thing. But when you don't try at all, you submit to the enemy. That's not of God. We need to wake up. To be a Christian, our life needs to show it. You know, it's not saying I'm a Christian carrying a Bible around with us. Or having a cross on our neck. Being a Christian is having a Christian life and living it day to day. You are a living Bible. And for those that are living elsewhere in, 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 in fairy tale land, it's a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call because there's two places at the end of time that you'll go, Sister Kim. You'll go to a place that we call heaven or you'll go to a place that we call hell. There's, there's no two ways about it. There's no in-between. For those that believe in purgatory, there's no such thing as purgatory. It's never been in any Bible that's out there. No such thing as purgatory. We will never be able to pray our loved ones out of hell. We'll never be able to pray our loved ones to heaven. We have to do that on this side. This side of the round, praise God. The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
I know that he's your Lord. He's my Lord today, praise God. Every knee shall bow. I was reading, which was going to be part of my, my, uh, my sermon this morning, about, about the demonic man when Jesus got off the boat and this was the man that no chains could hold him. In the Gospel of Matthew, it said, Brother Al, that he came and he kneeled and worshipped Jesus. He worshipped Jesus even though he was filled with a legion of demons. And that scripture came to me, every knee shall bow. Even the demons will bow to the one that we call Jesus. Even the demons will bow. Because he is Lord God Almighty. This morning, open up your Bibles to Luke 16. I'm going to tell you what and why I serve God. And why I love him so much. They sang that song. I've got so much to be thankful for. Brother Pete, it, it's not because I'm afraid of hell. I'm going to be honest with you. Even in my heathen times, I was not afraid of hell. Right. I didn't even know if hell existed or not, but I wasn't afraid of it. I'm going to tell you why I serve God. Not to say how I hell. I serve God because I love him that much because of what he's done for me. He changed my spirit. Brother Tony, he changed my heart. <laughs> He gave me joy and peace for what we go through right now. Every one of you are going through trials, and I am too. You can still have the joy of the Lord. You still have the strength of the Lord. You still have happiness. And you know what? You can still have a peace where you can lay your head down at night and sleep. You don't have to get up and walk around the room. You don't have to get up and lay there all night long and toss and turn and worry. Because the peace of God that surpasses all understanding is with you right now, praise yes. God. If you receive it and you accept it from him, he's already given to you. But you know what? If you don't understand that, even as a Christian, you ain't going to have it. If you're a sinner man or a woman, you ain't going to have it. You want that peace, get to know Jesus. You want that peace, get to know what God has already done for you, praise God. But I serve him because I love him. I serve him because of, of the peace that he gave me. Talk about a disturbed mind. Talk about having no patience. Talk about aggravation. Talking about having an anger inside of me that was not a righteous anger, but an anger that was just stirring up. That's gone, praise God, because of the peacemaker, because of God Almighty. There's some people that feel that when I die, if I don't make it to heaven, that's okay. I'm just going to become worm food. That's it. I'm going to go back to dust. How many people know that this here, this body, this temple, this is temporary? This is going to go back to dust. But the true person that you are lives inside. Amen. That's your soul, that's your spirit. And it's going to go somewhere. Yes. The Bible says that when we die, we go back to where we came from, to, to, to heaven, praise God. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, praise God. I believe that with all my heart. Why? Because that's what the Bible says, not what Ray Smith says. That's what the Bible says. I hear some people say on Judgment Day, even the Christian, we have to stand before God. I'm going to tell you something. Open up your book and read the Word of God. Don't go by the traditions of your church that you've heard for many years. Now, I've said this to a Bible study a few times. I think maybe I preached on it one time here. You know what? You have a past. When you have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have become His sheep. You have become his children. And he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. Wow. But when we go to heaven, Brother Don, we're not standing in front of God as a child of God. See, we've already been forgiven. See, the word of God will not con con contradict itself. It says all our sins are not remembered anymore. They're in the sea of forgetfulness. They've been gone, Sister Kim. You know, if we, if we have a slip with the tongue or a slip with the thought, or, or we do something we ought not to, because nobody's perfect and you're not one person is perfect in here. But if we have one little slip up, God's not going to say, now you're at heaven's gate. Now I'm going to have you remember what you did or what you said or what you thought. That's not going to happen. Those sins are gone. The Bible tells me that all sins, all sins are washed away. All sins are in the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west. Because here's what's going to happen on that day. Here's what's going to happen when we go up to God. You know what? Here's what it is. There's going to be a, there's going to be a road. 
And God is sitting out there at the fall, but there's going to be a road where all the Christians, the sheep, are going to be just going over here. Why? We got a ticket already paid. Who's got a ticket already paid this Amen. morning? Praise God. God has already paid for that ticket. Praise God. You know what? It's like an airplane taking off, man. I, my ticket's already bought and paid for. And I got a home waiting for me. It's already bought and paid for. It's already prepared. It's already there. So when I get to heaven, I don't have to. I, I'm just going by the judge. That's just a little preliminary thing. I'm going to go in with the rest, rest of the children. And I'm going to go right into heaven. But the sinner man or woman, he will have to make an account for himself. See, we have a just God, but he's not going to send you to a place called hell. He's not going to send you unless you know why. Then you are going to have to make an account, but it's too late. You can be there pleading and saying, well, 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 well it was just four or five times. or I, I know I should have done it, but Lord, I, I believed in you. I, I trust in you. And he's going to be one of those that say, you know what? You workers of iniquity, I knew you not. Depart from me. No, you can't go over there. You can't go over there where Gina went. You can't go over there with, where, there where Pat went. That's my children. That's my sheep. They knew my voice. They heard my voice. They loved me. They gave their lives to me. Now you have to go over here to a place that we call hell. You will be reminded why you're there. Let's start chapter 16 of Luke, verse 19. Say amen when you're there. Amen. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared functiously every day. What that's telling us, this man had, had means. He had money. He was a man of stature, a man of high position. We don't know what he did for a living or what he didn't do for a living, but we know he had some money. Purple was a color of royalty, a, a color of someone in a high position. It was a, not just linen, it was fine linen. And he fared functionally, which meant he lived good. He feasted. He, he lived very, very well. And 20 says, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. We know that Jesus spoke in parables, and some people call this a parable. I do not call this a parable. This is the only story that Jesus used as an example where he really used a real person's name. Check it out. The name he used was Lazarus. Not the one he raised from the dead, but this beggar called Lazarus, this poor man. He laid at the gate, and he was full of sores. Full of sores. And 21 says, And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Here was a man hungry. Here was a man full of sores. But as we're going to find out, he had a right heart. How many people know you don't have to be rich and have a right heart? Amen. You can be living under a bridge and have a right heart. If you truly know God. But he was full of sores. And he had no doctor. And the only doctor that he had, Sister Laura, was the, a dog coming to lick his sores. That's the only comfort he had was a dog's tongue licking his sores. And 22 says, and it came to pass the beggar died. I love this. There's been people, I've been at their deathbeds, and I know Sister Mary you have, and you may have too, Sister Kim. I've had people just have a smile and peace upon their face, upon their, 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 their you can see in their eyes and their lips what they have remaining on this earth. There's just a peace that comes upon them. Yes. Just a peace upon them. I remember when Sister Debbie died a few weeks ago, you know, someone said, you know, well, she wasn't perfect and this and that and wasn't going to church and she was sick. And you know what? I knew her heart and she looked terrible. Her mouth was twisted up, brother Al. Her eyes were lowered back in her head. Uh, Sister Anita, all you, know, you can see is the white and, and just drool coming down and, and, and uh, they took out the holes out of her uh, uh, throat and, and the ventilator off and, and she looked a terrible mess but we prayed one last time Sister Kim and I said you know what I, you know, I brought up this story I said it talked about the angels of God coming down to take Lazarus I said the angels of God are coming down right now to take Sister Debbie to heaven and with that her face changed and her eyes closed and her, her lids came down and, 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 and she had a peace about her that actually filled the whole room 
Sister Elma saw that and felt that. The others saw it. Her face went back to normal. It was not crooked anymore. Everything went back to normal. She looked like she was sleeping, like she was a baby. God came and took her that day with his angels. And this is what happened to Lazarus this day. And remember, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Isn't it amazing that even on our deathbed, even when we close our eyes for the last time, the angels of God are there to take us on to glory land. Now, that's not Ray Smith. That's the Word of God. Some people have problems with that, taking it with God. That's what the Word says. And it came to pass the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. 23. And in hell, say hell. Hell. Hell is not always a dirty word, by the way. And in hell... He looked his eyes, lifted up his eyes, being in torments. This tells us something right there. Sister Kim, when we're in hell, we're going to be tormented. This tells us something else, too, that we're still going to have some type of eyes to see. Because it said he lifted his eyes, being in torment. So wherever hell is, wherever you're at in hell, you're going to be able to see what's happening. You're going to be able to see what's going on. And being in torment, he seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. He saw what was going on. I'm in torment here in hell. But I'm looking up from hell and I see, I see Abraham being in the bosom of Abraham, being in the presence of God. You'll start to have an understanding of what has happened, what's going on. You know, I, I said, I serve God because of, of the love and the peace he's given me and the change in my heart and my soul and my spirit and my life. But if we could lift up these floorboards, and I've shared this with you before, and, and we look down and not see the basement, we could tear up these floorboards and see a place called hell and seeing people right now in torment in hell, looking up at us, maybe lifting up hands that they may have at us in torment, screaming out. We wouldn't want anybody going to a place called hell. We wouldn't want anybody. Definitely we wouldn't want our children going there. We wouldn't want our loved ones going there. We wouldn't want our, our church friends going there. Screaming, yelling, and torment. We do everything we can to keep them out of that place. See, once they're there, we can't reach down and pull them up. Once they're there, they can't come back, as we're going to find out. There's a gap that nobody is going to be able to cross. But what we can do with something on this side with our life, and with the, being a walking Bible and a walking uh, example of our Lord Jesus Christ, being an ambassador of His to show that there is a better way. You're going to have other Christians mock you. You're going to have the sinner man and woman mock you. I thought you were supposed to be a Christian. Aren't you supposed to take care of this person, that person, this person? No. The Bible says if a man does not work, he does not eat. That's the word. That is the word of God. So many people think that the church and, and the world owes them a living. I'm going to tell you something. Nobody's ever paid for my bill since I was 14 years old. We make our own way in this world. Amen. And we make it very well with the help of Almighty God. People have to understand we're in a world today of everybody saying, Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. The government, give me. The state, give me. Mom and dad, give me. Grandpa and grandma. We got people 50, 60 years old still living at home with mom and dad. Ridiculous. I got a 56-year-old brother, professional bodybuilder. I love him. I hope he's watching this. He may get a little upset and hurt, but he's still living at home with mom. He needs to get his rear end out and get his own place. Well, I take that back. He's got his own place, but he won't live there. His girlfriend's living there now, and he stays at home with mom. That tears me up. And I'm not saying it to be funny. I'm saying it to be serious. People, like the ones last night, sister, man, they're never going to change. Until they give it all to God, they're never going to change. Until they become a true Christian, they're never going to change. And they think your prayers is going to change them. God will never force his will upon anybody. He will honor our prayers sometimes. 
He will honor our prayers and put people in their path and set your circumstances in their path to wake them up. But sometimes when they're down and out, sometimes when they're walking in the rain, sometimes when they have no place to lay their head, God is trying to show them something and teach them something. Amen. And say, there's a better way to live, praise God. Get off the streets. Give up the alcohol. Give up the drugs. Start a new life with Jesus Christ. Yes. Sometimes we got to hit rock bottom, they say, in order to come up. And sometimes God will let you fall because he let me fall to the rock bottom. Me too. I know he let you fall, sister, to the rock bottom. And once we fail to the rock bottom, there's only one way up, and that's through Jesus Christ. But we can't go up until we touch him by receiving him as Lord of our life. And looking at this, look at 24. Not only does he have eyes, not only can he feel pain, Sister Kim, in hell, he can cry out. He doesn't just say he spoke. He cried. I take that literally as if he was screaming out. Have you ever cried out? Help me! Help me! He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And we're going to see that God, even though he's a God of mercy, there will come a time that the mercy is cut off. There'll come a time the grace is cut off. In the book of Genesis, they said the Lord repented that he made man, and we knew he had the flood, and he wiped out the entire world with the exception of Noah, his wife, three sons, and their three wives. The entire world was destroyed. The Bible tells us in the Old Testament that he was so fed up with the children coming to him all the time and and, 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 and just saying, I need this, Lord, I want this, Lord, we're going to serve you. And once they got what they wanted, they went right back out and did what they did before. Right back out and worshipped the, the idols. And, and this is the only time you're ever going to find the word divorce. The word divorce is in the Bible. God divorced his people. God divorced his people. And he said, you're on your own, kids. You're gone. For over 20 years, they were on their own, Sister Mary. 20 years they suffered famine, they suffered disease, they suffered torment. But they came back to God, listen to this. They came back to God with a truly repentant heart. And they said, Lord God, we know that you're the only God. You're Lord God Almighty. We did wrong serving the other gods. We did wrong walking away from you. And here's what they said. This is why God knew that they were truly repentant. We don't want anything from you. We're not asking anything from you. We deserve what we're getting. But from this moment on, we're going to honor you as Lord, God Almighty. But because of God's grace and mercy, he did receive them back in the fold. But once we're in hell, there is no receiving back in the fold. Wow. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And sin Lazarus, that he may dip his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Some people ask me, do you believe that's a real flame? I believe it really is. Yes, yes. It really is. Have you ever gotten burned on a stove or burned on a fire? No. I had a firecracker one time, not go off, but the little fuse that spins around about 10 years ago. It had a long fuse and I lit it and it spun around and it went around my finger. I almost said some words I didn't want to say. It hurt like the dickens. It hurt like the dickens. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. What he meant by that is, remember in your life you had everything you wanted. You lived well. And what he meant by evil things wasn't that Lazarus was evil. He wasn't getting the wealth. He wasn't getting that sumptuous lifestyle. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there's a great golf fix, a great golf. Great there's a separation, people. Once we pass on, there's no crossing over back and forth. There's a great golf fix so that they which pass from... Hence, to you cannot neither can they pass to us. 
that would come from tents. And he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him, send Lazarus to my father's house. I have five brothers, five brethren, that he may testify unto them. At least they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. He was speaking of their Bible at the time. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went from them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded from one that rose from the dead. Amen. People, there is a hell. Yes. There is a hell. So how do you stay out of hell? How do you stay out of hell? Turn to Acts 2 for a moment. There's many people that don't believe in hell. I believe in hell with all my heart. Yes. People say, why do you believe that? Because I just read it from Bible. The Word of God. Hell is spoken of more by Jesus himself in the Bible than heaven. That should tell us something. It's mentioned as a place of gnashing of teeth. A place of torment. Acts 2, starting with verse 36. This is the first true Holy Ghost message brought forth. On the day of Pentecost, Peter was preaching to the masses at that time. And he was talking about how they crucified our Lord Jesus Christ. And he says in 36, 236, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? We feel that we did wrong. What, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Say repent. 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 And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift. Of the Holy Ghost. What do I believe? Baptism does not save you. Repenting and turning to God is what saves you. That's right. Praise God. If you're just sorry about something that you've done, that's not repentance. Repentance means turning around and not going back to the sin. Repentance means going around and not going back to the drugs. Repentance means going uh, in a different direction, not going back to the sex, not going back to the gambling, not going back to the evil ways of life. That's what repentance is. It means turning around. Leaving sin and going to Jesus. Leaving sin and going to Jesus. That's what repenting means. Not feeling sorry. That's just part of it. But feeling sorry enough that you don't want to do it again. Amen. This is be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Baptism isn't just a, a submergence of water. Baptism is a, it, it, is a being a baptized in the spirit of God. Praise God. See, he's going to baptize you. John said, I baptize you with water, but there's one that's going to baptize you with, with, with fire and the Holy Ghost, praise God. Yes, to be yes. submerged, to be completely covered. Baptism means to be submerged, not sprinkled on. So when we submerge in the water, we completely place it down. That represents the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, where the old man goes down and the old woman come, goes down, but they come up new. But really, they were already made brand new before that through the Spirit of God. So with this baptism here, you know, it's being baptized with the Spirit of God Almighty where, where He's in us and around us and through us. And it says the name of Jesus Christ. Someone says, how do you baptize? We baptize in the name of Jesus. Someone says, well, what do you think about the last scripture in Matthew? Baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, read the scripture. It doesn't say baptize in the names, plural. It says baptize in the name of. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. There's one God, one Lord, one Savior. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
You cannot receive the Holy Ghost until you've received Jesus Christ. Nowhere in the New Testament will you find anybody being baptized other than the name of Jesus Christ. That's why we do what we do. Now, when it comes to the rapture, people get a little touchy with that. Do you believe there's a rapture? Do you believe there's a pre-trib, a mid-trib, or a post-tribulation? Well, I believe that we're going to be raptured out. I also know this. The Bible yes, says a number of times that the children of God will not see the wrath of God. Right. I'm not going to see the wrath of God. So that means I'm not going to go through a lot of this. Right. You know, he, he took Enoch. He walked with uh, Enoch walked with God so close, God just took him. Right. I believe that we're going to be in church service one day, and all of a sudden there's Sister Kim holding a book, and that book drops, and... and uh, there's no guitar uh, in his hands anymore because there's no there's no Al holding a guitar anymore. There's no Anita over here looking at the camera. And for the remainder of the ones, I hope I'm not the remainder of the ones looking around. We're going, where did everybody go? Well, that happened. We know where everybody already went and is going to happen. We may not be in church. We might be in the shower. We might be in the kitchen. We might be washing clothes. I think it's going to come, the Bible says, when you least expect it. It's in the days of Noah. It's just going to happen. We're not even going to be thinking about it. We're not even going to be talking about it. I believe that we're going to be at the checkout uh, uh, buying some fried chicken someplace at Kenny King's and all that. And somebody else would be plowing up the ground. And somebody else would be putting gas in their car. And somebody else would be taking a, an airplane trip. And somebody else might be sewing a pair of socks that need mending and all that. Somebody else might be getting eggs out of the chicken coop. Who knows? Praise God. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, there goes the back of eggs, and all the eggs are down on the ground. And you got a bunch of little goats running around acting crazy because there's nobody around anymore to take care of them. That's what's going to happen. We're out of here because the Bible says that He's going to come. He's going to come in the clouds and everyone's going to see him. Everyone's going to see him. I want you to say everyone. Everyone's going to see him. He's going to come in a shout and everyone's going to see him. And you know what? With that last trumpet, we're going to act. We're out of here. We're out of here. The movies depict sometimes your clothes just fall on and sometimes they show you the clothes folded up, Sister Kim. I've seen movies like that. I don't know about all that stuff, but I know one thing. I'm out of here. Amen. So I said, what do you think heaven's going to be? It don't matter. It's wherever Jesus is. That's where heaven's going to be. It's going to be glorious. It doesn't matter. We're going to be out of here. We're going to be out of here, praise God. Do we have to be perfect? We strive to perfection. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. I want this house clean. I want it good because God is living in this house. Can you imagine if Jesus was walking on the earth right now and I called you and said, Sister Kim, Jesus is going to be at your house at 4 this afternoon. She'd be on the phone calling Sam. Sam, I don't care how bad you'll get hurt. You pick up the newspapers, you pick up the magazines, you know, you clean that up and all that. And you know what? Put fresh towels in the bathroom, put fresh toilet paper in there. Jesus is coming. <coughs> but we don't do the same with this house. Sometimes we got to paint this house up. Sometimes we got to fix it up. If we don't fix up a house... And clean it up. You know what happens? It starts to look dingy and dirty and smelly. Try not taking your garbage out for about three months in a hot yes. summer. Oh, no. We got to get rid of this garbage. That's why Paul said, I crucify this flesh daily. daily. I got to get rid of this flesh. I got to crucify it daily. Well, why do you have to crucify it daily? Because I ain't perfect. There's only one perfect, and that was Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. How do we do that? Lord, forgive me. It's me one more time. Before anybody got in, I prayed up here, and that's why I said, Lord, forgive me my shortcomings. Forgive me my faults. Forgive me if I said something to hurt somebody. Forgive me something. And now I, I don't say that quite like that anymore. I got somebody upset with me last week about going to church. They don't want to go to church until the virus thing is over. I said, you've got to get into church. Don't forsake assembling yourselves as some uh, have. They got upset with me. I said, that's okay to get upset with me. That's the word of God. You get upset with God. Don't get upset with me. 14 months not going to church. Shame on them. Shame on them. And as I said last week, if you're looking for a perfect church, this ain't it. If you're looking for a perfect pastor minister, this ain't it. Looking for perfect singers. Even Brother Al said last week he messed up on a note. There ain't no perfect person. <laughs> See, Shame on we're you. Have to, I do have to break through the but, anyway. yes. but there's no perfect person. 
You go to church not looking for the perfect church or the perfect person, but you look to the perfect one, which is Lord God Almighty. Amen. That's who you look to. Amen. That's who you look to. Amen. So, do I believe Jesus is coming back? Yes. yes. Is he coming back for everybody? No. He's coming back for his church, for his children, for his bride, for his bride. He's coming back for the born again believer. What happens to the unbeliever? He's going to go to a place that we don't talk about enough. We don't talk about it often enough. We don't want to talk about it. It's a place that they make horror movies about. Some people think it's a fairy tale. It's not a fairy tale. Because God's not a fairy tale. And everything written in that word of God, I believe, from the first in, in Genesis, to the last amen in, in Revelation. Lord God Almighty is here. Lord God Almighty is coming back. Lord God Almighty lives in here. But Lord God Almighty also has a home prepared for us someplace too. Amen. And are we going to be able to see him? Yes. Because you know why? I'm going to, I'm going to use scripture. Because the Bible says that we will know him. So we shall be like him. Yes. Amen. Yes. So in order to, to know him, we have to see him. And when John the Revelator was in, uh, uh, you know, uh, before he wrote the book of Revelation, he, 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 he saw Jesus. Now, the only disappointment I have, I don't think, Sister Pat, is going to be Jesus with the, the long, beautiful hair and the, and the nail-scarred hands and, and, and feet. I, I, that's what I want to see. I want to be able to say, Lord, you suffered so much for me. I want to be able to tell him that. I want to be able to, uh, maybe he'll let us see him that way. But that's not how John saw him. He saw him. Lord God Almighty. And when we get to heaven, someone says, are you a Jesus man? Yes, because when we get to heaven, there's going to be how many thrones up there? One, One main throne. One main throne. And guess who's going to be sitting in that throne? Jesus. 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 People can't understand, well, how can it be Jesus? I thought Father God was going to be there. Well, Isaiah also calls him Father. Jesus is God. It's one God. One God. Amen. It's one God. That's why they wanted to crucify him so bad. Jesus said, I do all these great works and you want to kill me. Why is that? No, not because of your miracles. Not because of your great works. We want to kill you because you're claiming to be God. Doing what you're doing, you're claiming to be God. He could claim that because he was God. He was Emmanuel, God with us. Yes, yes. Someone said, well, you can't see God. He's a spirit. That's what the Bible says. But it's also why he had to come in the flesh in the form of a baby. The Bible tells us that the God had bodily is in him, Jesus Christ. Praise God. Anyhow, tonight we have service at 6 o'clock. Uh, we're going to have a little bit to eat afterwards. Uh, the lobster didn't make it, uh, the shrimp, so we're going to have bologna and ham tonight, praise God. And anyhow, come expecting a blessing. I pray that you all have a good day. And for those that are watching, don't turn off yet. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. There's no guarantee yes. of a tomorrow. You know, I'm so uh, sad about your friend. Seriously, uh, Al. You know, I talked about, uh, I've had relatives that got a car since uh, a while back, a few years ago, and they were killed. We had two young boys young second cousin, my cousin's uh, children, two, two, two kids killed, teenagers, 19, 18 years old, killed in a car accident on a Saturday night. They weren't doing anything bad. They were just speeding, going down, and accidents happen. A good friend of mine, Chris Bezik, about 30 years ago, he was a uh, fireman, had a, a great job in the fire department. Uh, he uh, was a First responder uh, uh, before that, uh, taking care of you know the ambulance people and all that. EMT, uh, physical man, fit, talk about fit. He always worked out. He got in a car accident out on Route Two, uh, out in Minner, and uh, a, a truck came by and just clipped him. And he he drove he drove.
broke for years, so he knew what he was doing. He had a helmet on, but it tore his leg all. all and, and it wasn't the fact he was so physically fit. The doctor said he would have died, but it crippled him up for the rest of his life. So, uh, uh, and this young man lost his foot and who knows what else. So we're going to pray, continue to pray for his health as he pulls out here. But, you know, we don't know. He could have lost his life. And so when we have friends that are almost die or loved ones that get sick for whatever reason, you know, we, we need to start praying for them and talking to them. Not just praying for them, but talking to them and saying, you know what? Life is short. Amen. We've had people in our church, even young people in our church, they don't come back because they're, 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 they're dead. That's point blank. They're, they're dying. And if they don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they're not in a place called heaven. They're in a place called hell. So let, let's save our children. Let's work together. Save mine and I'll help save yours. You know, let, we need to talk to them and say, this today yes. is the day of salvation. Today is the day yes. to start a brand new life. Well, I'm not ready. Nobody is ready. If you wait until you're ready, you'll never It'll get never ready. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. We all rise and stand.